summer 2018, the Calabrian town of Riace attracted the attention of journalists from around Italy wanting to investigate a unique utopian experiment. Riace had been providing shelter and work for thousands of migrants, helping the migrants and the town itself as many residents had left to find work elsewhere. Intrigued by this promise of a utopia, I visited to see for myself. I wanted to meet Mayor Mimo Lucano, architect of this radical pathway to inclusivity. As soon as I arrived, I found myself surrounded by thousands of demonstrators. Mayor Mimo Lucano had just been placed under house arrest by the newly elected right-wing government for allegedly misappropriating funds. The new government have made it clear that Mayor Mimo and others like him pose a real threat to their strong anti-immigration agenda. C'è un'integrazione veramente a Riace, che un sindaco con la fuga dei suoi cittadini è riuscito a fare rinascere questa città che ha dato lavoro a tutti, non soltanto ai stranieri, anche agli italiani. Questo è un vero, un vero modello. Il sindaco deve essere libero e continuare il suo lavoro per il bene di questo paese, perché non lo sta facendo soltanto per sé, ma lo sta facendo per dimostrare al mondo che l'Italia esiste. L'Italia ha anche un valore, l'Italia ha anche il suo nome nell'Europa. E rompere questa catena e portare l'Italia all'inferno, dimenticare questi valori di umanità, è un crimine secondo me. Ci dite che dobbiamo rispettare le regole, le vostre regole, se negano la dignità di un essere umano, noi siamo felici di violarle. Vogliamo Domenico Lucano libero subito. Non cancelleranno il modello Riace per via giudiziaria e questa piazza lo dimostra. Abbiamo il compito di costruire Riace ovunque e di dimostrare che Riace non si arresta. Among the raised voices, I didn't notice Daniel, who would later really help me understand this place. We have a three days, three nights in the sea. You know, it was very terrible. You don't know whether you are going to survive or you not. But, you know, in the life, sometimes you have to take the risk, you know. So, we decided to take the risk and we survived. So, <laughs> we have to do a process for our document. So, we get our papers. We ask whether they can help us give us a shelter where we can live or with my family because uh, my wife was pregnant, is about to deliver, so they say, okay, we will take you people to one town called Riachi and the mayor there is a very good man, he can help you people. So I told the mayor that I want to stay here with my family, only that he can help me with a job. Let's say after one and a half year, he found me a job, so that's what <laughs> I'm doing to take care of my family. My job is uh, I'm a refuse collector. You know, I used to we used to collect the refuse from house to house. That's what I'm doing. In Ghana, based in Ghana, I was in working in the, um, a little company where we used to spray a car. So that's where I used to work when before I left. When I I arrived here uh, during 2008, you know, the, the city is not like this, you know. The migration 
sources has helped the, uh, the city a lot, you know. Yeah, I've given many people a job from 2011 to 2017. There are, there are about 100 people working with the migrants. When I returned six months later, I noticed how support for migrants in Italy was changing, both socially and financially, and the streets of Riace were much quieter. A lot of the refugees started to leave. Uh, a lot of them have gone to Germany. Uh, it's really quiet now uh, in Riace and in other places as well. The refugee projects were providing employment for most of the village. So if you take away the refugees, take away the project, you're plunging Calabria back into unemployment again. And people will leave. So it won't just be the refugees that will leave, it will be everybody that leaves and the infrastructure will fall apart again. It will go back to the way it was. And that's, that's really not good. 10 minutes down the road is Kamini, a smaller town with the same Riyasha model that is for now still being state funded. Sono un libro professionista, faccio, facevo l'architetto perché adesso da tre anni che sono alla guida come primo cittadino del comune eh, non posso più esercitare perché è incompatibile con l'attività del sindaco. E sono il responsabile del progetto di accoglienza Yungi Mundo. Questo progetto nasce a Camini nel 2011 Abbiamo iniziato con l'accoglienza con 11 persone dalla Costa d'Avorio, ad oggi abbiamo 118 persone. È un progetto molto interessante che ha permesso la rinascita del paese e perché negli anni è stato colpito dall'emigrazione, è stato colpito dal, dall'abbandono eh, che le persone sono andate via in cerca di lavoro. Quindi ci trovavamo con le case spitte abbandonate grazie al progetto di accoglienza Le case sono state recuperate e ora il progetto vive. Parliamo di un paese che era stato negli anni svuotato. In questi anni, pochi anni di, di presenza dei rifugiati, il paese è ritornato a vivere. Non c'era una scuola materna ed è stata riaperta grazie ai bambini dei rifugiati. C'era solo una scuola elementare con otto bambini che stava per chiudere, è stata ampliata e cresciuta con 50 bambini. Le case erano abbandonate, ora sono occupate e vive e, e vivono queste case grazie ai rifugiati. Nelle vie non si vedevano più bambini giocare e ora grazie ai rifugiati questo è possibile. La cosa più bella è che abbiamo dato vita al, al centro storico, al borgo, perché si sono aperte tante case che erano chiuse da, da tantissimi anni, si sono accese le luci. Sono ritornati anche gli odori nel paese che si erano persi dei nonni che insomma, quando preparavano da mangiare era, il paese era sempre ricco di odore, di, di cose, prodotti tipici. Insomma è stato è come fare una sfida, ecco. e credo che ci siamo riusciti, ci siamo riusciti perché i risultati si vedono. I rifugiati hanno un ruolo importante che, che svolgono nella presenza. Un altro ruolo importantissimo che loro fanno, fanno tantissimi lavori che ormai gli italiani negli anni hanno perso l'abitudine e non li facevano. Stanno, stanno svolgendo dei lavori importantissimi per la comunità di Camini. Anna has lived in Camini for almost a year and is one of the last international volunteers left. She is also an artist and has stayed on to leave a lasting artistic impression on the community. This is the library space. So we've, we've organised everything. Um, some of the volunteers logged all the books. Um, we've put out some more donations. Um, and then they, they have a school here for the refugees as well. So they learn Italian and math, science and things. Um, I was I was doing English classes for some of the guys, but they've they've all gone now. And this is this is my studio. I've been given permission to use this space temporarily while I plan for the mural project. So this is um, this is my inspiration board, the cardboard Camini. Um, 
this is this is one of the, the sketches that I was um, looking at doing. This is the this is the white wall that I will be painting in the future. I'm trying to find something from Camini's past and from the present, and then think about the future. So I can have like three panels this shape going along the wall. To supplement my income, I've been getting bits of glass from the beach and making jewellery and selling it to students. <laughs> Although the enthusiasm here for the project is palpable, I had hardly met any migrants, and many of the houses were clearly uninhabitable. I was sensing that the situation was hugely complex, and maybe even here a government-subsidized utopia was under real threat. Al governo ora c'è la destra insieme al Movimento 5 Stelle che ha ha cambiato totalmente politica di quello che stavano facendo la sinistra. Hanno chiuso i porti, quindi ci so, purtroppo ci, ci sono meno arrivi. Ma questi men arrivi non è che ci sono per, eh, perché è finita la guerra, non ci sono perché praticamente hanno chiuso tutti i porti e, e non ci sono più le organizzazioni internazionali che davano, non governative, che davano una mano. Noi stiamo cercando ugualmente di rimanere e di dare sostegno alle persone che hanno bisogno di aiuto. No? Sicuramente senza contributi economici, non, eh, pubblici, non sarà facile, però è una sfida che noi stiamo tentando pure di, di portare avanti e sono sicuro che l'equipe, la cooperativa, il comune di Camini riuscirà a passare pure quest'altro problema. When you look at other refugee projects around here, this one's one of the best ones. So if you need to go to hospital, they take you to hospital. If you, if you need clothes, they can help you with that. They can help you with a lot of things. Places down the road, Rosano, you don't want to go there. And I think we've just had some people incoming from, from that place because the poverty and the living conditions was just so bad, people were dying. So this place, it's, it's not perfect, but it's, it's a little heaven compared to a lot of the other places. <laughs> but I would say like, a utopia doesn't exist. And if, they, if someone thinks that it is a utopia, then you're denying the, the problems and then you're not able to fix the problems because you can't see them. So a lot of people thought Riachi was a utopia, but the whole time it's existed, unemployment's been extremely high. They have one of the lowest incomes in Europe here and one of the highest unemployment rates. It is it's quite scary to think about it. The outright transformation that has taken place in Riachi and Camini over the years affirms the value that migrants and such underprivileged towns hold for each other. And although the near future of these villages and the migrants of Italy may seem bleak, the situation is still fluid. And as long as there are people like Pino, Rosario, Anna and Daniel, the hope for mutual growth remains alive. Well, my future, as you can see, basically, I my own intention was to stay here to grow up my children, you know. But sometimes, you know, life you cannot decide, you know. Sometimes life decides where you, you move on. But for now I'm here and let's hope things will change. But now, for now I cannot say that I'm, I'm leaving here or my destiny is another. For now I'm here and I'm hoping for a better tomorrow. But, you know, life is full of surprises. So. We cannot say anything. When a time comes, it's for me to, I mean, to continue my journey or it's for me to change the destination. The time will tell me, you know. So for now, I'm here. I'm happy here. So.